Make the line here of you have a dollar tree, a dollar general, aside from the stock reaction, delivering some solid numbers, right? But they're relying on lower income workers. How does that play out in the wage world? Yeah, no, this is very important. I mean, we're at the point in the business cycle where it's gone on for so many years, almost 10 years now. And we're getting to the point where the jobs that are being created, everyone with education basically has a job. The jobs that are being created are exactly jobs that for people with lower skills and lower qualifications. So in some sense, this should actually be bullish for brands and for names that that cater to lower income groups and therefore lower wage groups. Uh, that being said, uh, the problem is for all parts of the income distribution that we have just not seen much wage growth, which we have spoken about and you cover so well it's for so long time, namely that we're just not seeing that wage growth yet come around, despite that the labor market looks so overheated and has done so now for quite some time. Now, Torsten, as you've been speaking, we put out some charts. We'll go back to a couple of those charts because there are a tale of two stories here, which is real wages, which are down actually over a period of time. And you take into account inflation because inflation Inflation as it comes up, pretty headline is cutting into it. On, on the other hand, consumer confidence is spiking up. It's going real up. So the consumer seems to be much, much more confident, even as the average weekly earnings are going down. Absolutely. As the chart shows, uh, average weekly earnings have, uh, as, again, as a bit of a mystery, as Jay Powell also said. He said it's a puzzle. It's not a mystery. But it has been somewhat surprising that it's remained so relatively low. One thing that has been a good development is that the labor force participation rate has rebounded from the lows. Mm -hmm. So some people are coming back, and that's holding wages down. But at some point, again to the story about the low-end consumer we are getting to the point where it's just much anecdotal evidence that uh, it's getting more and more difficult to find workers we have more job openings than we have unemployed people the quits rate meaning the people who are quitting their jobs uh, voluntarily is at the highest level since 2006 so we have a lot of issues suggesting that uh, the labor market should actually be really strong both for high middle and low-income consumers well, what's interesting is that taking a look at sort of a Dollar Tree, uh, looking through their earnings report, for example, uh, gross margins uh, decreased a little bit there. Also, operating income margin uh, fell by about 1% uh, year on year. And that means that these retailers can hold up if they're willing to spend more and sell their items for less to get their customers in the store. How long can something like that sustain itself. Yeah, absolutely. And remember also the input costs are going up, energy right. prices and commodity prices are going up. And most importantly, for the average company in the US, two thirds of expenses is labor, meaning workers. Mm -hmm. And if you do start to see shortage of labor at the lower end of the income distribution, which is what we've seen, we've seen minimum wages go up for retail jobs, we've seen minimum wages go up in sectors where the skill requirements are not uh, long educations. So in that sense, that's telling you also that maybe there is more margin pressure as such which might be a reason also why we're not quite seeing uh, the reaction that we're expecting.